We'd like to convene, call to order, and the verification of the quorum. Um, just kind of, I kind of did. A, we've already kind of already did that. I just want to just can't ever do it enough. It seems. I see five trustees. We have ourselves a quorum, and I'm uh, we're calling to order. So let's please join me in standing for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, I see on the first uh, agenda item tonight, um, you actually, I appreciated your response in your email uh, that you sent out earlier. Um, that makes me uh, feel a little better, but I was hoping, um, I was hoping to just have a conversation. I've, security is very dear to many people's, um, well, it's on many people's minds, especially after the University of Idaho incident. And uh, being prepared is something that I want NIC to be prepared for. Um, right now, I would like, uh, I'm still of the um, desire, and I, it's a conversation um, with you, as I mentioned, we've already, I've already mentioned this to you on, on Friday, um, and about the security situation. And I would just like, uh, if maybe my other trustees would join me in, in possibly doing an RFP for a security, just kind of secondary assessment at North Idaho College. So there is one, Scott. There, there is a uh, security assessment, um, as I said in the email. Um, the, the Idaho Safe Schools um, organization is um, meeting with uh, Alex Harris next week, and they will. They are working to do an assessment. That's what they do. They do it for the state, so it doesn't cost us anything, and that's um, the you know, that's, that's their job. So they're planning on coming up and doing that kind of assessment. Well, um, let's, I, I'd recommend doing that. If, uh, if yeah. you're not satisfied, um, then we can do one that costs us money. Um, but getting one done for free seems like the one for free. Solution. That sounds great. Um, Trustee Banducci. Sounds like it's, that's what their specialty is too. Yep. I'm going to ask a little bit of a big question. Uh, so I'd, give me the re reader's digest answer. And I'm, I'm, addressing the president swain here since you're speaking to this can you give me an idea of the comprehensive nature of that review because i looked at this agenda item and and uh and i actually prepared a statement I, i'm going to say it real quick and then i'm going to ask my question but i was just because what i had written because this was important i thought i said due to recent events around the nation and on other campuses and i wasn't going to mention you by specifically but we have so obviously that's one of them uh, I, I would like, to, I wanted to have a full security review here at NIC. Uh, and I said, as a college, we need to do everything we can to try and ensure the safety of our students, faculty, staff, and the visitors to our campus. Uh, I said, having a fresh set of eyes, take a look at us, will be very helpful as we strive to keep everyone as safe as possible. And then I was, depending on where we went, I was prepared to maybe try to make a motion. So what I'm wondering is, what. What I'm looking for is, are these guys going to do, a, when I say a full review, that's going to be all NIC-related security functions, personnel, resources, uh, providing feedback on our strengths and weaknesses, along with suggestions on how we, we can improve? Because uh, I, I, I would want this to definitely be a, a comprehensive review, um, taking into all, all those considerations. I think also... If, if you're are you looking for a response or? well yeah let's let's give the president i, I haven't i the, the initial meetings next week um okay. i'll i'll know more then i don't i can't answer that question right now would okay. maybe it's just best if uh maybe a trustee or two could participate in the meeting and no. just kind of learn the scope of that no okay it's an operational decision it's mine oh well, yeah that's i'll that's make why. sure you're briefed on it okay that's that's okay um well, then we have to go with the information before us. Um, okay. So there, there are many security related. I was in the Army for 26 years. I understand security. 
I understand guns. I understand um, uh, campuses. Virginia Tech happened just down the road from where I was stationed um, in, at James Madison University. I understand that maybe better than any of you. And I understand that the role of guns on campus is not necessarily going to improve security. We will take all that into account and we will give you a full report on our findings. Chair McKenzie. Trustee Banducci. Uh, President Swain, that was more of a response than I guess I was expecting because there was a couple of those things I hadn't even addressed or identified. And I don't remember mentioning guns anywhere. And I'll match my military service with you anytime, sir. Been there, done it. Trust, Trustee Banducci. <laughs> Just I mean, band, I mean you... for experience with security and with weapons. I was a weapons instructor also. I was CAD myself. So, to... you know, you guys. But we're gonna, we're actually going to take a two-minute recess. All right? So we what, will take a two-minute so recess. It wasn't so, a challenge. I was asking a question. I was trying a two-minute recess. Thank you very much. is uh brought back into session so um okay well there's, there's a quorum of five trustee banducci please continue on all right then i'm going to make a motion and uh we can do it i'm going to suggest this motion and we can follow through with it or we least we can get some information and find out and then we can wait and see how this briefing goes and then what sort of information we get and what it looks like i uh i want to strike while the iron is hot i think security is a critical issue right now i, I think we need to make sure we're protecting this campus so my motion is to authorize an RFP slash RFQ, whichever is most appropriate, for an external agency to do a full review of all NIC-related security functions, personnel, and resources, providing feedback on our strengths and weaknesses, along with suggestions on how we can improve. The RFP and RFQ should be posted within the next 30 days. Okay, well, that would take us to discussion on a topic of what you're hoping to do. Um, I'm looking for a second. Is, my is there a second? I'll... I'll give a second for to go to so we can get to discussion. Okay, thank thank you, Trustee uh, Wagoner. Is there anyone who would like to say something right away? Is the motion to uh, supersede Dr. Swain's efforts here uh, to to replace replace his efforts with something else? Chair uh, McKenzie, Trustee Banducci. I would consider them in parallel, waiting to see what we end up with with this other discussion that we have and we'll have a couple of options to pursue an rfp is just a request for people to tell us what they could do for us and how much that might cost for what they can do for us uh, i think that's a, a small amount of work to to put something out and see what we get as an answer and we can compare that to what this other organization is offering and depending on what seems to be the best way to proceed then we'll have two choices but i think it operates in parallel Trustee Wagner, is that, is that so? Satisfied? You're not suggesting spending any money at this point. All we're going to do is put out a. I'll say it's a bid. It's an RFP or an RFQ, and I'm not sure uh, Sarah would have to do, decide what's appropriate. I don't know. Uh, to see who could provide that service and what that service would entail and how much it would cost, and so we put it out that we're desirous of getting a quote, and people come back and give us a quote. So it's, there's no risk on our to us on this okay so president swain you said no. you're starting to work on this when would you expect a result I, I don't know we until i have a meeting with him next week i i can't i can't answer that but we can do an rfp um and and see if there's anybody out there that is interested in doing a security assessment doesn't that doesn't cost anything it doesn't it, cost, it, it doesn't and there's some that are specialized in education also right. at the collegiate level so and if just to play advocate on both sides um i i do sound actually i, I sound kind of excited about this uh, review that's initiating um uh about that and it sounds like it's um 
kind of in a specialized field specifically for that to address a, a very common need and that kind of stuff. So I'm not necessarily, um, I, I don't think by doing an RFP, uh, it would supersede that or, or halt, bring that to a halt or anything. And, and also we could almost uh, get, get even a better understanding of the comprehensiveness or, or just anything that's out there. I, I know that when it was said to me that when the um, insurance went out to bid, which it hadn't gone out to bid for a long time using iCRIM, that actually NIC learned of a lot of new capabilities, um, such as, you know, cyber insurance and, and other things that are new insurance package. Uh, that was covered in iCRIM. Actually, it, it wasn't. No, it was covered in iCRIM. It's covered differently, but it was covered in iCRIM. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well. Uh, um, it's separately under the new insurance, but it was it was part of the package of iCRIM. Oh, that's so different as it was brief to me. Um, yes. Okay. So, a question, Dr. Swain. Um, this would having an RFQ RFP would not cause you a significant problem. No, no. And you just get more information, right. and you could decide what to do. Right? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. We can do that. No problem. Okay. Not. Yep. No problem. Yep. Uh, you don't need to vote on. It. We'll just do it. Wonderful. That's it. That shows a great. Working all, together, all I was what we want. For. Okay, yes. so I think we don't even need to do a motion. So you guys both withdraw your uh, motions or in seconds. Uh, I need a yes. Yeah, I can withdraw. Sure, why don't you withdraw your second? I'll withdraw my second. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, thank withdraw. you for the conversation. I'll withdraw my motion. Thank you for the discussion. Uh, board accreditation response questions. Um, Into this, I think. I think we can come back to that. You can give me five more ten minutes. I'm going to skip to the next agenda item. Um, can I say something on that topic too? Yes, you may. I'm oh, sorry, board chair. Yes, you may. You're recognized. Uh, two things, um, President Swain. Sorry, I wasn't trying to be combative earlier. I just, I just wanted to ask a question, and I wasn't trying to push the agenda any further. I didn't want you to feel defensive on that. So, I mean, you and I both have some experience in some similar ways. Because I do want to say this, um, I think this is important. I, I just wrote this down, uh, noting the board, uh, the, the topic, and I have no idea where the, that uh, topic is going. It's got Chair McKenzie by it. So maybe I need to get off on a better foot a moment ago, but I think it's important. I want to say this, despite rumors to the contrary, any conspiracy theories, I am confident in saying that every member of this board wants NIC to retain its accreditation, and that does include me. And I hope that we will all work with whoever the president is and however this plays out with all the things going on. We will be supportive. If I, I would like to actually uh, take us back one. Thank you for saying that, sir. I think that's very true. Um, but if we go back to the ex security external review and assessment, if just so everyone is clear on campus doing an rfp of what was discussed is there's no side motives there's there's no side anything of getting guns on campus or or any 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 narrative like that let's just let's just set that straight as in what what we care about is safety of nic and and that is what president swain definitely cares about with no doubt i'm sure i have absolute confidence in that and, and that's what everyone here is. So if the next thing we need is more conspiracy theories of why the trustees are doing what they're doing. So I just want to say that to improve security, that's the only reason. So that the fact that, that even come up in conversation. Anyway, we're moving on. Uh, okay, so. Trustee Banducci, you, you were, did you have anything else you wanted to say regarding um, the board response to? Uh, no, no, that was all. That was all. Thank you. Okay. So I, I have a, this, we're moving to agenda item, board response to unauthorized distribution of the Macamer report. 
sensor of trusty Corkle. I, I've drafted a sensor here that I, I'm still supportive of. This must still be in my back. Okay, if you pass this down, read this. There we go. We'll read ours together. This is as I've written. The NIC Board of Trustees has a board conduct policy. This board expects ethical and business like conduct. Board members are expected to, and then I bullet these, maintain confidentiality of privileged information, work with fellow trustees in a spirit of harmony and cooperation in spite of differences of opinion, and deal appropriately with sensitive issues and respect the confidentiality of sensitive information. The board under its board conduct policy has the right to take appropriate action to enforce the obligations imposed hereunder, including without limitation, limiting or suspending board privileges, private or public censor, or other such action as the board deems appropriate. Whereas it has come to the knowledge of the board of trustees that, of the board, that trustee Cork, Brad Corkle has violated his fiduciary ethical and moral duty to this college, and his actions have harmed the college by his willfully disseminating confidential board information that was protected by attorney-client privilege. Whereas trustee Corkle has shown a disregard for following majority decisions of the board and to pander to his interest groups with his actions, this behavior continues to jeopardize the accreditation and shows a disdain for proper board governance. This behavior is the same behavior that led to the increased costs associated with ICRIM to settle with Dr. McLennan with the board admitting no wrongdoing. Now, therefore be it resolved that Trustee Corkle is here publicly censured and reprimanded by the North Idaho College Board of Trustees for the above referenced conduct. Now, therefore be it for the further resolved that the Board of Trustees respectfully requests that Trustee Corkle see such conduct in his capacity as an elected member of the Board of Trustees and that he rejoin the trustees in acting in accordance with the accreditation standards and board policies. So as board chair, I do make a motion that this censure be passed and approved by the board. It, no, you are not recognized if you keep, if you keep speaking, please be quiet. Thank you. The chair made a motion. Second. And it received a second by trustee Wagner. We are going to discussion, and I'm going to say this. Yes, the 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 piece of paper I handed out to y'all, the date needs to be changed to the 23rd. So as as it gets passed on whatever date, if we don't do it today, um, then we'll update it. One problem with our board governance is bad behavior has not been properly addressed. Yeah. We had a training, an ACCT training, where all the trustees who were in attendance agreed that board governance needs to be improved and we're improving it. <laughs> One step and demonstration of evidence is when you do something that's not right, we call it out and we say, don't do that again. So this is a censor and Trustee Corkle, I hope that we can still work, move forward and we can work together for the betterment of the students. But as board chair, I disagree that the um, violation of attorney-client privilege document uh, prematurely um, was that I believe that that was a poor choice. Are we under discussion right we now? We are under discussion, and Trustee Corkle, you're recognized. First of all, the attorney-client privilege states that the attorney can't talk about the issue. I can talk about it. And there was no provision anywhere saying that I can't give that report 
to whoever I want. Now, what needs to be said here is Art Macomer prepared a report at college expense that sounds like a roadmap for a coup to get rid of the college president. My allegiance and my fiduciary responsibility is to the college and to the taxpayers of Kootenai County. It's not to three members of this board, and it's certainly not to their attorney. I will gladly clear the room if I need to. Sit down. So, um, this, this report should be available so that everyone can see it and see for themselves what's going on here. I see this as an unhinged analysis and it recommends taking action that would be against the law and a violation of the current court order. Go ahead and censure me, okay? That's what you feel is important, but I did what my conscience told me to do. Mr. Chair. So, we're gonna take a recess of five minutes, 10 minutes. We're gonna take a recess of 10 minutes.
five. This meeting is reconvened. Mr. Chairman, are we still under discussion? We're still under discussion and Trustee Banducci is recognized. Thank you, Chair McKenzie. And please speak as loud as you can into your microphone and hold it up. Trustee Corporal, I don't want to do it back and forth and I don't uh, want to get in a, an argument with you or anything. But you said there was no notations on this document, nothing to inhibit you from, from any action. I, I do think it's a, appropriate. I, I want to share this. Right on the bottom of the cover of this document, the cover sheet says confidential. This material is confidential between North Idaho College Council and the Board of Trustees. Trustees on the North Idaho College Board have a fiduciary duty toward the college to protect it. This means each trustee must put their individual interests behind the primary duty of care and loyalty to the college to protect the public trust for which they are responsible. This report should not be shared without a passage of the Board of Trustees motion to approve the, board, the report's release that is made in open session at a properly noticed business meeting of the board. Release of this material without full board authorization is a violation of the fiduciary duties an elected official must uphold. So, sir, I gotta believe your eyes were wide open when you made the choice to disclose this document as that was right on the cover sheet. And I, I suspect Trustee McKenzie, and I know myself, are particularly sensitive to these sorts of things because we've worked with some trustees in the past that had a habit of releasing documents that should not have been released and are violating the attorney-client privilege, violating the, the confidentiality of the executive session. And so all I would ask for my part is that everybody respect the fact that if things happen in executive session, or if there is documents between us and legal counsel or other things, that we hold those amongst ourselves and we work as a group together and that none of us betray that confidence of, of any of the others. That, that would be my point. That's all. Trustee Corco, would you like to say? I would like to say something. Well, I'm, I'm not going to respond, but I just want to point out a couple of things about your uh, censure report here. Uh, for one, I don't pander to anybody. Okay. And number two, uh, you say that I jeopardize accreditation. I think that a couple of the biggest jeopardizing situations are one, that report, and two, this meeting. Okay. That's all I have to say. I'm going to list some facts. Trustee Wagner, to you. The way the board is supposed to operate is you don't make individual decisions. Lean to your microphone. We don't, you do not make, the way the board is supposed to operate is you do not make individual decisions. Uh, giving out legal information to another group that in fact is the opposition uh, in a lawsuit is beyond the pale. This violation of attorney-client privilege uh, is even worse because it was given literally the information was given to opposing counsel of the people who are so excuse me excuse me who was it given to do you, do you want me to say I don't think it's lies if we say go ahead Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Trustee Corkle is one of the most honorable men I've ever known. And I will tell you, I this thing about attorney-client privilege, you guys have it backwards. We have been strong-armed since the beginning of my trusteeship by email, by our counsel, attorney-client privilege emails come across like this. And it's like, that's a threat. I feel threatened. And I am under no obligation not to share that information. It's the attorney that is under an obligation not to share that information. We were at a meeting and he was asked, did you share the report? And he said, yes, but he didn't tell you who he shared it with. And he has every right to share it with specific people and without any penalty. And you don't know who he shared it with. 
Actually, I do know who he shared it with. Well, I disagree. I do not think you know who is who he shared it with. And I, Terry Zimmerman, you were in the room when we found out. No, you're drawing conclusions. I was in the room. You're drawing conclusions, and Chair, there, you don't have anything to support. Chair McKenzie, it. sir. Yes. For the sake of the board and the college, why may I make a suggestion that we end this discussion at this time on uh, on that direction? It's just being confrontational, and I, I don't think it's helping any of us, and I don't think it's accomplishing anything. Okay, I would just need to say one thing. No, I, I'm the chair. The board's sorry, authority. Do you disagree with that, Mr. Chair. If if I could say one more, if thing. I could make trustee, a clarification, we're going to go to Trustee Zimmerman. Okay, then we're going to go to Attorney McAmer. Thank you. I. Uh, always in the front of my mind, the top of my mind, I think about accreditation. And I think that it might be wise to um, just completely, let's not even talk about censoring Ms. Trustee Corkle any longer. I think that it, um, it's something you brought up. I think that we can just move forward. I don't think we need to take any action on it. And that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you. Um, just to clarify a couple things, uh, the. The message that I put in my emails, Trustee Zimmerman, is the exact same email that Council Lyons used for years, and I thought it was appropriate. Um, number two, the attorney-client privilege does uh, require confidentiality from the attorney, but the point here is that my client is the entire board. It is not any one trustee, and so as a board, the board has to vote to release information that is given by the attorney to the board. And so the, uh, that's number two. And number three, the, the fiduciary duty is, um, I think, violated. If, if, if not violated, it's severely burdened when a report is given to uh, apparently someone who is an opposing party in a lawsuit to the college before the trustees can't even read it. And so that's an issue that should be considered. Um, and uh, my advice to the board is to work as a board together. And if they decide to release something, it should be done as a vote by the board. And Trustee Zimmerman, you should not feel threatened by any of my emails. Uh, if anything, they are too dry for most people and Don't not- respond. Okay, threatened. as chair, last to speak, if anyone else wants to go, there's something, this is a crucial topic. One, because I'm asking the community had an opportunity to be provided information through the accreditation response. And sadly, none of this was properly documented or included, even though I actively tried to get it in there. And we're in the middle of this other motion. Yes, this is about the censor. Okay. Censor, okay. The reason why I bring it up is because the accreditation agency is standing on the outside and they're asking, what, what is going on? What happened to McLennan? What happened? Why do you have these now lawsuits going on? Specific to the board. That's why they're asking. So I would think that the board would participate in the response to explain to the accreditation agency what is going on. And so I, it's important because there was no authors in the room when ICRIMP explained to us the reasons why McLennan received a single dime. It's the exact same reasons that the censor is happening right now is because we have trustees that are not respecting board decisions and working as a unified board. Now, I'll let you infer, we are not trying to go back and point fingers at people for the past two years. We could, we could do that all day. What we want is to turn NIC into a successful college. What we want, pointing fingers does not help any of us right now. Let's right now, move forward, realize that mistakes happened. I made those mistakes December, I think it was 8th, 
the open meeting law violations when we amended the agenda, I didn't state the emergency. I could have, but I missed that memo. I don't know if it was written to me. I don't want to point any fingers because the fact of the matter is I should have said it and I didn't. So that's when you recognize if you screwed up, you say you're sorry, definitely. And then you move forward and you keep going. And if my fellow chairs or board trustees want to remove their chair because he made a mistake, I fully respect that decision. It was an unintentional. The three meetings, open meeting law violations. That's so moving. We're, we're not even going to comment anymore on open litigation. You guys were supposed to stop me if we were to get there. So let's go back to this uh, sensor. So the reason why this sensor is important is we are demonstrating that we are going to hold each other accountable when bad behavior happens. Mr. Chair. Trustee Banducci. I'm considering what Trustee Zimmerman said, that we've had an opportunity to talk about this and, and, uh, and put it out there. I think I would be inclined to maybe request that the motions, well, we could either have the motions withdrawn or I guess we'd do a vote. But I'd be, I'd be interested in potentially not sending Mr. Corporal if two things could happen, I guess. If, if the trustees would commit to not release information prematurely, in fact, I think this item is going to be released voted on on the next agenda item. I think that's what that's about. Uh, I'll find out in a minute, I think, but I think that's where we're at. But Mr. Corkle, I would, I would appreciate at least some sort of, I don't like the word concession, but something from you that said, that says something like, I'll try to, I don't know, I don't know to say try, that in the future, you would defer to the board as a whole. And if we have documents to, to encourage the board as a whole to release them and that we won't, that you won't unilaterally release documents that have been given to us uh, or privy to us. I would, I would, I would like that. I, I don't want to get I an don't, argument. I don't want you to feel you have to be defiant and, and the middle censure can probably make someone very defensive, but just in, in the spirit of working together, would that be something that, uh, is, is that a gesture that you could make? I, I, is there somewhere you could come with that? Can, maybe could I sim Please, Chair, just a moment. Well, I'll, I'll take your words seriously. Um, I'm not certain right off the top of my head what my response is going to be because um, Maybe I knew about it, maybe I didn't, but I was rather stunned when I saw the McCumber report. Okay. And um, in the future, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Well, I at least, I'd appreciate that, at least okay. be up front. But if, if you could, and all of us, and yourself, just in the spirit of, yeah, just disclosure with one another and transparency. I've been up front. That was. Would you like? I, I, what? I, I before you speak, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a turn. Okay. I'm gonna go back to pointing fingers about who's the most wrong amongst us. Does not help when NIC's accreditation is pulled. Listen. When NIC's accreditation is pulled, nobody cares. It's most at fault. We've already lost accreditation. The damage has been done. Okay? If we don't learn as a board to respect board decisions, regardless if you voted for the motion or not, and work as a unified board, then I do believe NIC will fail. So I think we're headed to a vote unless a fellow trustee wishes to withdraw their motions. Did I make the motion? Who, who? Hold on. 
That leaves it to Trusty Wagoner to withdraw his second. But until then, I'm going to say one more thing while you think about it, sir. Factual information is what accreditation should be best on, not political vendettas. Providing factual information to an accreditation agency to legitimately pull an accreditation should be utmost important. The community de demands and deserves factual information to be provided. It is my opinion that the accreditation response does not contain all of the information that the community deserves. As chair, I tried. I tried to in incorporate that information uh, in planning of this accreditation re even response. I even offered to uh, my opinion that the board members, trustees should probably write eight of the 16 to explain the logic. And there is logic of the past two years to the accreditation agency. This is on the censor motion. So when it comes to censor and providing important information, holding trustees accountable and making sure that bad behavior is not repeated, this is tying it back to the censor motion. Hear me. We don't want board and material to be released prematurely so we can work as a board. It's as simple as that. And I, I think at least we've heard from Trustee Corkle that before he does it again, he's at least going to give us a heads up that he's going to do it again. Maybe more than 24 hours heads up so we can have an emergency meeting and then discuss another censor. So, Mr. Chairman, Matt, Matt, just a point of order here. In parliamentary procedures, the chair does not make a motion. The, the chair can ask for a motion, okay? For those who read Robert's Rules of Orders in small um, board settings, it is allowed, if even, and also it was me who made it. So um, even if that is the case, which I, I think we're in a disagreement of that opinion, we're welcome to dive into facts on that. Board, uh, Robert's Rules of Orders are mere guidelines for us, sir. So as long as there's order and they will communicate in here, that's the goal. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I will comment on that. We had instituted Robert's Rules of Orders as the standard for this board. When we had the three appointed trustees take on the majority of the board, they changed that policy and made Robert's Rules of Order as a guideline, not as mandatory. So we can use it as a guide, but we are not uh, restricted by it. So I just want to mention that because we did have that as Robert's Rules of Orders. And we did have had passed that. And it was our standard. Uh, that standard was repealed. Okay. So, well, just the, Wagner. The issue is. Please lean into your microphone. The issue is, does one person get to make a decision which counters the rest of the board? And the answer is no. And that is what NWCCU, those types of things, they want the board working as a team, period, because I've talked to them. So I'm hearing you do not recant your second. I'm not recanting my, my second at this point. No. I'm honestly tempted to withdraw my own motion on the subject. Just because past, I care about the future. And what I want is a board, a fully functioning board, a highly successful board. So I think we're going to go to a vote on this. And I think it's going to be on Trustee Banducci on if your vote, do you think what is the best way to get there? And it may not be antagonizing another board member with a censor. Which I don't mean to antagonize, but I do, as chair, have very limited options to work with my trustees as much as I agree or disagree with them. Mr. Chair, one last comment before you vote for the vote, please. I'll make it quick. Mr. Corporal. 
I do not want. One of us want to do right, find quite disagreeable that I do think that you were trying to do right, even though I disagree with your definition of right in this category. So, well, Mr. Banducci, Trustee Banducci, um, I'll say this much there will be no more surprises. I greatly appreciate that, sir. Thank you. Okay. Having said no more, Let's call for a vote. Trustee Corkle, for your own censor, would you like to censor yourself? No, that would be a negative. Uh, Trustee Zimmerman? No. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Banducci? I'm going to vote no. That would be a, a three to one. The chair does not need to vote in this is issue. The motion passes or fails. Forgive me. The motion fails. The next agenda on the topic. Oh, yeah. Okay. We are on to the agenda topic of board response to Macamer report on investigation of Dr. Sweeney's contract. Is there a trustee that has prepared a motion on this? Mr. Chair, I'm not quite sure where this, this action discussion item, I have prepared something. I think it's germane to understanding what we're doing with this. Pretty, pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Um, but before you may, may you provide the audience some context? Well, this is a, I, I, the, here's how I view this agenda item. I view this as a follow on to the prior agenda item, the, dis, the discussion we just had and the concern of the release of the document and that it has been publicly released. I also think that for Transparency, most of these documents, when possible, need to be released. It's just a matter of timing. Um, and so uh, I had expected this document would be released publicly at some point after the board had had the opportunity to see it and digest it first and then and, and, and work with it. So I see this as the opportunity to release this document publicly with board approval. And that, that's the direction I'm going. So if somebody else has a different vision here, You'll need to jump in or, or do something different. But I, what I would say to this is that um, uh, I, have a, I have a sentence here. It says, regarding Mr. McAmer's report and, consider and in consideration of tonight's agenda topics, again, including the previous agenda item, uh, that I make the following motion. And the motion that I have jotted down here Pretty simple and straightforward. It's to approve release of Mr. McAmer's authorized investigation report. The report is to be released in its entirety with no edits or redactions. Attorney client privilege as to the content of the final report is waived. That's it. So you're making that motion? That's my, yes, that is my motion. Is is again, I'll read it one more time. It's to approve release of Mr. Art McAmer's authorized investigation report. The report is to be released in its entirety with no edits or redactions. Attorney client privilege as to the content of the final report is waived. I'll second that. Go into discussion. If anyone doesn't mind, I'd like to start us, unless Chair Banducci. Okay. No, there was Wagner as a second. Yeah. Uh, during my time on this board, decisions have been made um, quite extensively, and they've never been made without significant thought. 
um, behind them. Specifically, when it came to switching presidents in my first two years, that was lots of thoughts for months that actually happened for that. Matter of fact, when trustees asked August 3rd for more time, I thought that was actually requested in good faith instead of what I learned of the gamesmanships afterwards. Boards must act on factual information, as does accreditation agencies. And it, as a trustee, that's why we have our um, board conduct policy that we should adhere to and hold each other to. And part of that is communication. And that communication is so trustees act on factual information. So when you hear things from one individual, maybe somewhere in the food chain, that that information, you need to act no on proper information. So that's why the board conduct policy basically has all information coming through uh, the president's office. We have one employee, the president. And review of many allegations that we may not have made public um, was done. And Attorney McAmer um, has produced us a report, which is what Trustee Banducci has just motioned to release to the public. And um, I'm supportive of this. So trying to get the community as much information has been my goal. Uh, it's quite funny that someone just responded, uh, put in their email saying, I'm emailing you, but I hear that you never respond. And that's because half the time as uh, the agenda item that someone put on, um, it seems that these were under litigation from people who don't like board decisions. Um, so where we're at, we're at. Uh, does any other trustees have something to say? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd be more comfortable discussing this issue in public after it's been released to the public. Okay. Okay. Is it after, like after the motion passes or uh, Wednesday? After the motion passes, the information is released and the public has had a chance to digest it. Okay. Uh, just anyone else? So the, the motion before us, if you repeat it for us, is to, would you read the motion? Yes, sorry. The motion, as stated previously, I will repeat, hopefully everybody can hear me, is to approve release of Mr. Art McAmer's authorized investigation report. The report is to be released in its entirety with no edits or redactions. Attorney-client privilege as to the content of the final report is waived. Okay, that makes this uh, um, I, I have a, uh, oh man, Trustee Zerman. Thank you. Uh, uh, when are you suggesting to release it? If, as soon as this meeting's over, or what's the timing on that? It'll be right after the motion, I understand it. Mr. Chair, if I may respond. Yes. Uh, Trustee Zimmerman, my intention is for it to be immediately released. So when, whenever uh, Ms. Rumpler or her people can release that out. Would, the, would I we? Think, I think that's the, the where that would... Would we from. like to just? I think just just a moment, sir. Um, I would have to. No, I don't have to. We'd have to um, probably get her the report to have it released. So I'm going to suspect that she does not have that in her possession at this time. So as part of that, probably would need um, <clears throat> Mr. Mackenber if he would provide that to uh, Ms. Rumpler and and her staff for uh, public release. So uh, I don't have all that in my motion, but I don't, I don't know that I need it. I think I think we got it. Are you okay with that? Okay. There's two wish executive I think we could have had this conversation. There's named personnel, which I would 
consider personally brave whistleblowers who speak the truth and my heart goes out to them. Um, to speak at my heart goes out to them is what I said. Uh, do we do we wish so? The time on this thing is ten o'clock tonight or something. So uh, I think it's at the same time. It's twenty four hours. Yeah. Okay, just so everyone gets it at the same time, all news agencies get it at the same time. Everyone, just in the interest of fairness, instead of one main mainstream press getting a copy of it first or something like that. Um, is that, is that fair to any? Does that need a friendly motion? Mr. Chair, I believe Ms. Rumpers is going to assist us here. You could recognize oh, there you Laura. Are. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. How about nine o'clock in the morning? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to say, yeah. Uh, did I hear you say a time? Over nine nine o'clock in the morning. We'll just... We could ask maybe, yes, if Mr. McAmur could deliver it by 9 a.m. tomorrow. Well, if he, yeah. if he gets it to us by 7.30, we can get it up on the oh, website. Well, I was going to give him till nine, sir. No, he can get up early. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, uh, this should have been a little bit more orchestrated, but we... But here, here's the tr here's the truth, y'all. As much as I want to make it even immediate, I I think it would be benefit. Uh, it would be best if we um, a provided any named employees in there a copy of it, and b uh, basically set it for nine p.m. tomorrow night. To where if there is any issues with that that's actually more difficult because then they have to somebody would have to be there to turn it on at nine o'clock it's much easier to do it nine or ten o'clock in the morning is it, much easier okay mr chair if i may if we're looking to buy some time it would be nice to uh to properly do this maybe mr mackamore can have it delivered uh mr mackamore 9 a.m or 10 a.m what would be your preference well i can get up for a I can get up early, so whenever. 9 a.m. it is. Okay, so Mr. McElroy will try to provide the report by 9 a.m. tomorrow. And let's give uh, Ms. Rumpler and her team till 4 p.m. tomorrow. That's still, that's, still part of the, that's still part of the business day. It gives them a, a bit time to process it and to properly distribute and disseminate it as appropriate. So that, 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 that's what I would say. 9 a.m. for Mr. McElroy and 4 p.m. for the folks here at the college. I think that's reasonable and gives everybody some time. Thank you, Chair. Just, so, just, I mean, obviously you want everybody to get it at the same time, right? And Mr. McAmer can give it to the staff here at nine. So they would get it out as latest by four o'clock. That's what you're saying? That's. And, and it's up, then we leave it up to them to send it out for their, at their convenience from, from the college staff who's. Right. I think we'll just post it, set, set a time to post it on the website and just okay. whatever that, whatever that time is. I'm just trying to rely on human resources and other, other, every, every. Right. Uh, what uh, Dr. Swain is saying, pick a time and sometime. If, if we get it, it at nine, we can get it up on the website by 1030. No problem. Okay. 10, 1030 in the morning. I, I think, I think maybe I'm wrong. But I, I think if I'm I'm willing I'm willing if if and nobody in your administration has any concerns or anything from human resources or anything I don't think um, I'm fine going earlier but if there's even one person who's uh, dissenting I, I would appreciate you know I'll let you I'll let you handle it. you're you're president it's operational it's just as board expectation by 4 p.m. unless uh, 
any concerns come up from it's, your review and no, that kind of stuff. It'll be easy. It'll Sound be great? Easy. Yep. Okay, I, I'm going to lay it at rest. Mr. Chair, do we feel a need for me to amend my motion to add those times? Because I can do that. I, I think the president we, we can implement gets the okay. so 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. and that gives everybody enough time and allows them to do their job without having to rush or be stressed. Okay, so hopefully sooner than 4 p.m. But but that's uh, in the board motion. We'll get it. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Um, just for the fun, do we want to read it again, or does everyone understand the motion? Okay, okay. We're going to call the vote for all those interested in releasing this report and increasing transparency, as I see it, as uh, the motion is put before us. Uh, please vote aye. 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 All right, and that would be five eyes of releasing this report. Um, so that's a unanimous vote and trying to get the information out to the public. And thank you, fellow trustees. Next on the agenda, is there any other responses individual members would like to say about that? I think Trustee Corkle, did you have something you want to say or do you want to say it after 4 p.m. tomorrow or something? Okay. Uh, all right. We are on the topic of discussion and vote regarding curing of possible open meeting violation at June 22nd, 2022 board meeting regarding the action selection of president and follow on decisions stemming from that violation. All right. Chair McKenzie, I will lead off on this. So it's assigned to me as the action item, agenda item. There are times when this board needs to address an issue. There are times when an issue needs to be addressed within a specific time period. This applies to the following subject. As a result of a recently completed investigation, trustees were notified by legal counsel on 4-14-2023 that an open meeting law violation occurred on 6-22-2022. Due to this violation, all decisions relating to the hiring of Dominic B. Swain made at that meeting and subsequently thereafter related to the decisions at that meeting to hire him or null and void. Based on this, I make the following motion. Motion. The Board of Trustees acknowledges that an open meeting law violation occurred on 6-22-2022 when the predetermined hiring decision to hire Dominic D. Swain as president of NIC was made. Subsequently, the follow-on decisions to hire him, including the contract approval by the Board on 7-14-2022 are also null and void. This makes the signature on the contract by David Wold on 7-14-2022 and by Dominic Swain on 7-15-2022 null and void. Because of this violation, the hiring of Dominic D. Swain is null and void. Therefore, the contract Dominic D. Swain has with NIC is null and void. However, in light of the ongoing accreditation and litigation circumstances, Dominic D. Swain will continue as the active president of NIC, performing the role of president until the board decides otherwise. He will continue to receive his current compensation until the board decides otherwise and or a new contract is negotiated and put in place. Second. Second. Trustee Wagner, are you second? We're going to discussion. Trustee Benucci, would you like to lead us with discussion? We're seeing Trustee Corkle is eager to say something. Uh, I reckon it is Trustee Benucci. That's my motion. I get first crack. We have, uh, I believe, sound legal interpretation on this. I believe we are. I believe we are working within the prescribed legal time limit, which we need to work within. We have acknowledged the issue, and we are addressing it. We are curing it, and that is the appropriate action for this board to take at this time. That's what I have, sir. Mr. Chairman, Trustee Corkle. I don't see how anybody who is not involved with that situation can be asked to cure it. 
I certainly wasn't there. And um, our current legal counsel wasn't there. So I don't see how we can be asked to cure something that we had nothing to do with. And it's been my understanding and the advice I've received in recent days that it's way past the statute of limitations to take any action on this. The report did fine. Please have an order. Trustee Corbin, please keep going. Okay, so just understand you interpret this. This, Dr. Swain, you are still president after this motion. You're still definitely acting president after this motion. Uh, this is getting us, this is my interpretation of it. This is, this is getting the board to be speak with one voice into, um, as it, okay. Um, is there anything else that needs to be said on this topic? Trustee. Thank you. I do have some things that I wanted to share. I've been reviewing this report for quite some time. <clears throat> so I have uh, prepared a statement that I'm going to go ahead and read. Thank you. I do not support proceeding to vote in favor of the motion to cure possible open meeting violations at the June 22nd, 2022 board meeting and actions that stem for the following reasons. First, the allegations presented to the board are not supported by the evidence. Number two, Mr. McComber's advice regarding open meeting law is contrary to the law as clearly outlined in Meyer's opinion. And number three, proceeding clearly violates our fiduciary duty to the college as trustees. And to help you understand this, I will discuss each of these concerns one at a time. Number one. The allegations presented to the board about open meeting law violations in June of 2022 are not supported by any evidence. The record provided to us is nothing but a stringing together of assumptions and no concrete facts. The report contains no interviews of any of the trustees acting at the time. Additionally, Mr. McComber's conclusions are based only on discussions between staff members. So discussions between staff cannot violate the open meeting law. This information is at best hearsay and at worst gossip, not a basis for action by the trustees. Number two, contrary to the absurd legal analysis and conclusion of Mr. McComber, Judge Meyer's opinion clearly holds that correction of an open meeting violation after 180 days is time barred. In her opinion, she states, however, any action the board may have taken due to its prior alleged violations of Idaho's open meeting laws are now time barred. A cause of action arising under Idaho's open meeting laws to void the agreement with Dr. Swain needed to be commenced 30 days after NIC entered into the employment contract. Any other suit needed to commence within 180 days after NIC entered into the employment contract before the end of January, 2023. The college failed to file a suit. Mr. McComber argues that the board can self cure a violation anytime it is raised. However, Judge Meyer clearly finds to the contrary when she states any action the board may have taken, not any lawsuit the college could have filed is now time barred. I have serious doubts about accepting Mr. McComber's legal advice on this issue when Judge Meyer has already ruled to the contrary. And number three, voiding Dr. Swain's contract violates our fiduciary duty as trustees. The Northwest Commission has stated the following concerns as part of its sanction of show cause against the college, which clearly related to keeping Dr. Swain in his position. Frequent changes in leadership with, no, with little to no input from relevant stakeholders without following institutional policies. Uncertainty as to who is the chief executive office at the North Idaho College. Lots of accreditation would be devastating to the college. As you know, there are many disastrous impacts, but to name just a few, credits earned would not be accepted by Idaho's four-year colleges. Students would not be eligible for state scholarships and students would not have credentials needed by employers for hiring. Idaho's Ethics and Government Act charges public officers with public trust and calls for us to assure that governmental functions and policies reflect to the maximum extent possible the public interest. Taking action that would cause loss of accreditation is not in the best interest of the public, the college, or our students. 
public comments have overwhelmingly urged preservation of accreditation. Miss, Mr. Chair, mm. Mr. Chair, mm. if I may. Any, uh, have I been recognized, sir? You recognize, sir. Thank you. Well, I guess it comes down to whose legal advice we're taking, since the judge doesn't work for us, um, <laughs> and Mr. Macomer does. I think it prudent that we work with our attorney and his advice. And I, I do want to reverse just, one thing. Your talking points, which were which, which were prepared prior to the meeting, I might have expected a slightly different outcome on this motion. We are not changing presidents. We are not jeopardizing our fiduciary uh, responsibility. His, uh, as the motion said, his compensation remains unchanged. He remains the president, and he is in the role of the president. So most of number three, uh, it's not a concern or, or invalid, as you stated it. Uh, the only thing that this board is doing at this point is acknowledging the open meeting law violation. We are curing it. And that's what we're doing, which is appropriate. Acknowledgement and curing. Chair. No, I'm going to say something. No, wait. Why can't I speak? Thank you. You recognize. else gets to, so I think I should, too. Um, so... I understand your desire to go back and, and, and repair or fix what you believe uh, was in error, but I feel, I believe you're asking me to vote on breaking the law. Like, I don't have the authority to go back and change something. It's, without, it's outside the boundaries. It's outside the 30 days. It's outside the 180 days. And I cannot, I cannot vote yes to do something that is against the law. No, you don't need to. Anybody just... Attorney McNamara would love to respond when you said no to him. So I thought Attorney McNamara's report already covered all those things. I'm surprised you're bringing it up right now. It's all in there. It was pretty straightforward just with the facts. And, uh, there are concerns you brought up, and, and Attorney McNamara put them in the report and addressed them. And um, I thought it was actually pretty straightforward. So, um, and also, this is, this is the rub. This is being forced because we're going to show cause right now to respond to many allegations put forward. Allegations justified by the Coeur d'Alene Press narratives. Yeah, you know, yes, yes, actually. And, and yes, for example, I would hope factual information would be provided back to the accreditation agency. And, and by people's only admission, the authors did not have documentation on certain topics that the accreditation agencies inquired about. So this, anyway, what, what I'm trying to say is that Dr. Swain, people I've put in here that they already emailed in that Dr. Swain is not, is currently not, this motion makes him an illegal president or anything. That's not at all. That's not a case with this, by this motion, Dr. Swain, in the morning you woke up, you were the legal acting president with the same operational authority of NMC as you're going to end the day with. At the beginning of the day, Dr. Swain, you were president. At this instant, Dr. Swain, you are president. After this motion, Dr. Swain, you are president. If there's any, un but not a soul be unclear on what's going on. So, and I would just ask a friendly, a friendly motion. Um, I was looking at your uh, motion. If you could just alter, and I'm a, this, this is important enough to get right. Uh, the last two words. A new contract is negotiated and put in place uh, by the um, by the chair. Um, motion, motion to amend, and uh, 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 that that the board decides uh, otherwise, and or a new contract is negotiated. Uh, you got to give me authority to negotiate as the chair, um, and and then I'll come back and, and put it in place um, with the board's authority. Is that Trustee Banducci? Mr. Chair, yes, I believe we've already given you and uh, Kelly Drew authorities to resolve the litigation 
come to resolution, which encompasses all sorts of options and possibilities. So I don't believe that's necessary because you already have the authority along with her to do everything. And then when it says contracts is negotiated and put in place because you guys would do the negotiations, but it would still have to come back to the board for a vote of approval. So I think I'm comfortable with the language and I believe you already have all the authority you need that you and Ms. Drew are um, the lead on this and, and are working um, in, in our in, in this capacity on our on all of our behalf. Um, and that's interesting. That I'm fine with it. Trustee Zerma. When did this board vote to give Chair McKenzie authority to work specifically with Kelly Drew on anything beyond just her reporting to you and you reporting to us? That's all I recall. Did we ever have a vote that gave you that authority? Yes, ma'am, we did. And maybe you're just not recalling it. We can go back and 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 look in the minutes for that, but we, but we did. We, we did the authority to to work with her and actually yes it was a pretty broad authority it was a resolution of the uh, litigation it's not voted we, on the public um I'll, I'll, yes, i was. may I comment on this um actually we went back and looked at the tape and the tape actually said uh to serve as a point of contact what how you interpret that is up to you but it said point of contact i'll even say that Kelly Drew did not have the authority to file the motion for reconsideration because that was never voted on in public. She has full authority to vigorously defend the lawsuit. Let's, let's not get into that. Okay. So we did okay. agree. We I think the explanation of the motion, I'm fine with the wording of it, and uh, call for the vote. Tonight, this is indirect. This is directly with the lawsuit. She should be here. Uh, the, do you not? Did you tell her not to come? It, it actually has the scope of the lawsuit is contract in terms of interpretation. We're so, up against okay. the lawsuit. So we're going to start on this end. Trustee Corkle, what is your vote? Your vote is no. Trustee Zimmerman, no. Trustee Wagner, yes. Trustee Banerjee, yes. Oh, right. The motion is passed. The contract is considered null and void. Dr. Swain, I still look forward to working with you as we um, figure this out. Next action. Right? So. What's the next agenda item? Is that, is that in action? Yeah. Okay. The board reserving to agenda and the board reserving state statute rights. All right. Chair McKenzie. So was I was I clear that, that the motion passed? There was a three two and it was a roll call vote. Just to be clear. Okay. Chair McKenzie. Yes. All right. Um, the next action item, discussion item is my name next to it, called board reserving state statute rights. As NIC policy 2.01.01 states, the Board of Trustees authority comes from state statute. The state statute, Title 33, Chapter 21, Section 9, in parentheses 33-2109, the Board of Trustees has the authority to appoint upon the recommendation of the President, officers, instructors, specialists, clerks, and other personnel, as it may deem necessary, and prescribe their duties. NIC policy 2.02.01 delegates board authority to the president. At this time, I motion the following. That the board of trustees changes policy 2.02.01 to reserve the board's legal authority and right under 33-2109 to appoint officers, instructors, specialists, clerks, and other personnel and not delegate this responsibility to the president. There that's, goes accreditation. That's my motion. That, so let's 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 uh, before we, let, let's consider what this motion means. Catch the Well, give me a second, then we can discuss it. Well, that would that would be very true. Sure. Give a second for discussion. All right, Mr. Chair, if I may mm -hmm. speak to my motion. Just a minute, during this time of uncertainty. 
This will allow the board to better engage with and work closer with the president as important college personnel decisions are made. As this policy relates to the workings of the board, it does not need to go to the Senate for their feedback. It's, it's our policy and we have unilateral authority to change it if we choose to. Okay, so let me interpret this and what I think this motion is saying. I don't know, just didn't say this, but are you saying that you want hiring decisions to basically be at the recommendation of the president as it is right now, um, but basically that recommendation to be uh, like approved on by the board? Yes, that would be accurate. Okay, so everything they just keep doing their thing. And then if they want to hire somebody, then um, it basically gets proposed to the board. And, um, and then the, you're ex ex uh, expecting a board vote to, to hire people? Mr. Chairman. Trustee Corkle. Um, the president runs the college and the president picks his staff. We don't get involved. Yes. No. So, may, may I uh, speak? Yeah, you're welcome to speak. Uh, um, part of accreditation, so that you're, um, Mr. Banducci, you're correct. The state law does allow that. However, accreditation does not. And, and so following state law is necessary, but insufficient to accomplish accreditation. And so the, if, if the motion that you just passed um, is, is passed by the board, I can guarantee that we will lose accreditation. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, you have, it, it's, it's in my contract that I have this authority. It's in the judge's ruling that I have this authority. And the NWCCU requires that I have this authority. So you're violating, there are three folks with great legal experience um, that say this would violate the authority and violate NWCCU rules for accreditation. So if you want to lose accreditation, go ahead and vote for it. Okay, that's very interesting. Chair McKenzie. So, uh, do, do I, does the chair get a chance to speak? Trustee Zimmerman. Thank you. Hey, you know what, guys, this was not adequately noticed. I can't believe we've got this little thing here on the agenda that says board reserving state statutes rights. There's nothing for us to know about this at all. I feel completely blindsided as a trustee. That is not the way to do business in the public eye. Thank hey, you. A little bit more. Sorry, sorry. Are we not, do we not have an open meeting law violation right now? I'm just for, like, I'm just confused. For, Art, would you weigh in on this? For, for what? It was not noticed. There's it's not, not noticed. insufficient notice. It's not. For, it's not. For, for it's nothing here. This is this is amazing that is happening right now. I think so. I would think, Trustee Zimmerman, that after training with the AG's office and hearing directly from them, that you would be more comfortable with our agenda that we put forward um, i don't know why you would think that at all i don't know why you would think that at all it's very obvious that there's not enough here did it, anybody wonder what this is about except for me or, and maybe todd you know you know what it was about trustee so trustee zimmerman respectfully you've expressed concern that trustees have basically a training session like we've done twice now and the AG's office explicitly told us that we can do that, as in like that we're going to do again tomorrow. So, so there's, there is, I'm going to actually consider myself, I've done quite a lot of research when it came to the early December with Attorney McAmer um, on making sure that we got our open meeting laws right. In January, you can even watch my words. I basically explained to the community that uh, uh, regarding board agenda packets and, and uh, documenting actually like uh, examples straight out of the AG's office. And this is one more example to where trying to get the 
uh, accreditation agency um, factual information instead of furthering baseless allegations that were actually included into the report from NIC and a, a recognized by NIC. That is one way of saying it, of a way to work together. And so when I'm trying to incorporate actual legal opinions on open meeting violations and provide accreditation agency factual information um, is, is what they need. Uh, so Trustee Zimmerman, I, I feel very confident that we are fine with our agenda today. So. Exactly, I think you're completely uh, inaccurate. I don't wanna say wrong, but inaccurate. And let's just get back to accreditation. Uh, we're gonna lose accreditation if you take this action. Is that what you guys want? You keep saying you do not want to lose accreditation, but if you take this action and you remove these authorities and you insert yourself into the daily operations of the college, that is flatly against what the accrediting body has told us. That's against accreditation and we will lose it. Anything so else? From my perspective on this, if I may, I'm gonna recognize my own self if there's nobody else here. So the we want to work with um, Dr. Swain. The thing is, is there are things happening right now that there are board member concerns specifically related to um, that I don't really want to share right now. And this is providing an opportunity to answer many a question specific to individual hirings that are. Um, making sure. So as a board of trustees, it's our governance responsibility to make sure that policies are followed and that policies are um, adhered to. And we'll have to remove people. Yeah. One, of the, one of the things that I think that this is, uh, that what this motion does is allow the board the opportunity to address those concerns regarding policy adherence. And, um, and it's not getting into the operations of the college. We, we are not making recommendations for hiring people. So we are merely approving uh, presidential decisions uh, that are, uh, have related to concerns to the board. Trustee Wagoner, please speak up and speak into your microphone. Yes. So, so. Okay. So, We're going to take a recess of 10 minutes.
No. Sorry, I'm getting tired. Thanks for helping me. Yeah. Okay, where, where where were we? Help us all refresh the memory. We had a motion in a second. Yeah, motion in a second. We're in discussion. So I think Trustee Banducci, by making this motion, do you want to get into operations of the college? That should be an easy no. But is your answer? What do you want to get into the operations of the college? No, we're not. Uh, we're not dipping down into the operations of the college. What we're doing is so that that's if I if, if we can have a discussion together, if, if we can help each other, what, help the audience understand who's revolting over this topic, and maybe even the, um, Dr. Swain, so we all understand. Sorry to steal your pen. Um, well, actually, okay. It's it's still at the recommendations of the president. It is, and we're we're following state law. And I would find it odd that the NWCCU would supersede state law. And there was a very definitive declaration statement made by President Swain regarding the NWCCU and their view of us following state law. And I guess I'd ask him to cite I don't think that's necessary. I actually have similar concerns. I'm going to propose um, that we maybe even back out of this and, and attempt it differently. Because what I see you trying to do is you're trying to address what you perceive as um, not necessarily, uh, for a lack for a better word in the heat of the moment, forgive me if this is insulting to anyone, injustice is happening. And you're trying to make it so those injustices don't happen on your watch. Is that true? Well, that would be, that would be a fair statement, I think. So I think your motion won't get you to where you want to be because I personally, I interpret it, I read it, I think about it as getting too deep into the operations. You don't even care about all positions. You're not trying to do a hiring freeze. You have certain concerns that I feel that need to be addressed for the college business to proceed as according to policy. Well, we've delegated this authority previously at, at all levels of the hiring. And if there's a way to do it, and I would still be satisfied to delegate all the hiring effectively below, say, the dean level. But deans, uh, VPs, president's cabinet, that sort of level, I think it's incumbent of the board and the president to work together. And uh, when those personnel decisions are made, and, and as the statute says, the uh, President, it's at his recommendation. So they're they're doing the hiring process. I, 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 the ones presenting. I love what you said to us. Hear me out, if you would. You actually have a decent idea, but I don't think going that far right now, without the input of the Senate, or even getting other con constituent groups on board right now, is in the be best interest of everybody. But additionally, there are concerns that you and I are aware of, that we, we do have to also make concerns addressed and, and work in a collaborative fashion addressing those concerns. So making a blanket policy of a, a dean position, which, which is, is a, a not necessarily a bad call. I know other colleges who are accredited actually do that. I know one person specifically who was even president during that time at a different college who was doing it. It's not a bad idea doing it on the whim of this meeting right now without input from the Senate, I, I don't think is good. Okay, but, but, but there are concerns that are kind of driving what you're doing right now. I have a way for you to meet those concerns if you hear me out. And, and I'm, I'm just gonna propose a motion that 
and I think there's, I think I, what you'd rather have instead of your motion right now is that there's hiring positions and decisions that are of concern, and I'll just say of the board chair, and it may not, they may not be completed and concerns by the board chair are addressed, so sanctioned by the board. So if you wish to have more board involvement into higher level leaderships at the college, it's not a bad idea. Plenty of colleges do it. But I do think getting constituent groups on board with that idea and getting a, a president on board with that as we have um, hoping to try and work collaboratively with them um, on board with that idea, I think, I think would be good. But there are concerns related to hiring positions, not, not many positions, thank, thankfully, um, that, that need to be addressed. So, Trustee yeah. Banducci, no, I will not name them, and please be quiet at the audience. So, Trustee Banducci, we can go to a vote for your thing, and then I can pull on a, a follow-on motion, or um, you can consume the words I've said. Any other trustees wish to say? To, to offer some. Hold on. Go ahead. All right, I do not know what your motion is, but in good faith, I'm trying to understand what I'm trying to accomplish here, because again, I'm, I'm not inclined to want to be involved in every decision, personnel either, and I don't care, you know, all the way down to the janitor or some, some such thing. So I'll, I would propose if, uh, if Trustee Wagner would withdraw his second, I will withdraw my motion and we'll start afresh on this topic and I would hear out your motion to see what you think might be a, a compromise or a, a solution to what I'm trying that I'm interested in trying to achieve. Okay, I can withdraw my second. Okay, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. Right. Brad, did you have something? Gary, um, did that answer what you were looking to hear from, or yeah. you do you have something? I, I didn't mean to jump in front of you. I think that I just, it's not specifically speaking to that, <clears throat> but, you know, policy 2.01.04, the trustees policy, we, we can revise policy in a meeting, but if it's a policy that impacts staff or other constituents, we we have to get their input. So I actually am really glad we took a break because, you know, we have the ACCT board consultants that we're working with and we have a training session tomorrow. So, you know, maybe when we have that training session, it might be something we talk to them about um, what their advice would be on making these changes during meetings and, and, and the best approach to to try to solve the problems that I, I don't know what they are, but that you perceive. Okay. Well, then, and and I had before the um, session or before I had wanted to make some comments. And we've withdrawn the yes, the, sir. The motion. Trustee Wagner, I owe you an apology because you were about to speak before I called for a recess. Right, please. You so, have the floor. So I'm looking at this, and it says board reserving state statute routes. So obviously. That is important, and the law does say we have the right to do this. Um, what I'm interested in is, and I'm relying on uh, Mr. McCumber. Uh, could he comment on if if we're responding to allegations of open meeting law violation? I think you two can. If I don't think we need to, I think we can move forward. It's, I'm not going to answer until he learns to pronounce my name correctly. It's Macumber. Okay. Uh, Mac forgive me. I, I'm sorry. I've gotten pretty good with everyone else. You're, you're the last. So I'm sorry. Okay. So, okay. I'm, I'm that you're willing to back your motion now. 
And I think you've already done that. If my memory, if I wasn't gotten so little sleep. My point is that my understanding of the things we're talking about is, and we have always opinions here, but I'm re uh, relying on our attorney here who has proved to me that he understands what's going on. And so other people may not like that, but that's certainly the truth. And so <clears throat> we want to make sure that we do not violate any laws. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there is, um, so tr trying to, okay. So going, the floor is, open and I'm going to make a motion that the hiring positions and decisions that are of concern by the board chair may not be completed until concerns by the board chair are addressed and this is so sanctioned by the board. So I actually have another motion that I'll describe to you before as I solicit a second for that one that I would like the president to uh, engage trustee Banducci on his idea for a policy on hiring positions and propose it to the Senate. Um, to hear Trustee Banducci's thoughts on regarding higher level positions, whether it be a dean or whatever, that's for you two to engage in discussion on um, and, and work on it uh, to propose to the Senate. Um, I'll second for discussion. Okay, so you're seconding my initial motion that hiring positions and decisions that are of concern by the board chair may not be completed until concerns by the board chair are addressed, and this is so sanctioned by the board. Going to discussion, is there any trustees that have concern or any accreditation violations that you're concerned? Yes, or you haven't defined you haven't defined which positions those are that you're concerned about, or why you're concerned about them. And you are supposed to lead through policies and procedures, and not through individual acts. And so you're you're inserting yourself into individual acts and not through policy. So if you want to do this, let's first create the policy that addresses those concerns adequately, and then we'll follow that policy. Right now, you're creating uh, an, so that now you're going to be the one that actually is making the hiring decisions because you've identified yourself as the person that I have to respond to. So now you're making the actual hiring decisions. And if you don't like that person, you don't like the selection process or how we went about it, then you say no, and I can't hire that person. So that is exactly interfering with the operations of the college. And you are now acting to make those decisions, not me. Okay, so I, I engaged concerns, uh, I presented concerns in collaborative fashion, and um, I, I, they, they still persist. And, and so I, I understand I, I'm, this is still all these hiring positions and decisions are coming at the recommendation of the president and your administration. Uh, nothing is changing any of the policies of how these positions are, uh, are uh, fulfilled. Uh, it is just monitoring. Um, and that is the board's responsibility. So uh, you're welcome to your opinion, but uh, I am still supportive of this uh, motion. I'm I'm happy to report to the board. Uh, accreditation agency, I think. I, I'm happy to report to the board oh. about the decisions that I have made and who I am hiring. I'm, I'm not happy to have you interfere with the operations of a college um, in selecting individuals or deciding who or who not that I can hire. Not not selecting individuals, sir. Those you, you and your team and your committees are selecting individuals. Um, so then, what is the role that you're suggesting for yourself? How do you identify that in policy, in a way that doesn't make you the decider in chief? I am not the decider of who gets hired. I am mainly that's, but that's monitoring uh, for policy adherence. But that so is the that motion is, before. If you do not understand it, sir, is the motion that hiring positions and decisions that are of concern by the board chair may not be completed until concerns by the board chair addressed, so sanctioned by the board. So, so the, and if you want any clarification that they come at the recommendation of the president as they already do, I'm happy to amend that in there. So the, hiring positions and decisions as recommended by the president. So I, I, I fail to see how this does not insert you into the hiring decision. That, it, that violates the policy. So if you can explain to me how you can insert yourself into this decision without violating the policy that where I'm the hiring authority, then I'm happy to entertain that. But the way you've expressed it, you are inserting yourself as chair into making that decision, not the board, but you as chair. 
So you're creating a new policy here that you're expecting the other trustees to vote on. And I don't think that that is the right way to do business is to create policy on the fly. Let us go back and develop a policy that addresses your concerns and we can present that as a policy. For now, this is, this is you inserting yourself as the decision maker, which affects the operations of the college. These are the people that I have to work with. You don't have to work with them. Yeah. I have to work with these people. And I get to select these people based on a, on, a, on a procedure established by the state and the college on hiring people. And we, we follow that policy very closely. We ad adhere to the policy. And, and the fact that you may not understand how that works in operations, I get that. But, but this is something that as educators, we do all the time. So inserting yourself into this process is something that will not go well um, and, it, and it violates the, the policy. So Okay, so uh, just to be clear, uh, the, I've never talked about a in, in specific individual person, sir. I'm talking about positions that I have concerned on. So positions, but, but, uh, but hiring, positions, hiring, the motion that hiring positions. Positions so. equal people. That's the way it works. Positions equal people. So when you say a position, you're talking about a person. Ultimately, it will be a person that fills that position. And I look so, forward to having it filled soon, as soon as my uh, concerns are addressed. And I'm looking forward to uh, collaboratively working with you. So Chair, the motion, we think we have a second. I think, Chair, so I'm going to make the motion. Excuse me, I'm, I'm It can go to, to discussion. Just to say oh. something, is there a problem with that? Who had their hand up first? Was it Todd? Trustee Banducci. You know, I don't know. I wasn't looking. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure Trustee, Trustee, Trustee Zimmerman, go ahead. Uh, Chair McKenzie, have you had an opportunity to read the agenda for next meeting? Okay. So, Trustee Wagner and I are proposing that we create a committee to work on our on our trustees' policies, on our board policies, mm -hmm. and I think that. That would be the best opportunity to raise your ideas, your concerns with that committee without breaking open meeting law violations, not having serial meeting. If you have a concern, let's do it the right way. Let's craft the policy or revise the policy and find something that will be suitable for the constituents and for the board and for our community. That's just, we're already working on that. So let's do that. If there wasn't a long, trustees Abanducci. Um, actually, what I'm going to say dovetails to what Trustee Zimmerman said, but but the, I'm doing this as part of the discussion. So um, I realize that her and Trustee Wagoner, Trustee Zimmerman, please, please, people. Trustee Zimmerman and Trustee Wagoner are going to be working on some policies. And as I, as I look at this policy, 2.02.01, we can institute it whilst amending it to institute it back to as the state statute says, and still within that delegates some of the authority below a certain level of employee. Again, now in my mind, I, I think the senior employee- Just even, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you there. If I want that policy to come about and I'm, I'm we have Wednesday, we're going to make that committee, it's going to go to the Senate, we're going to have a collaborative fashion of developing policy. We're not developing policy right now. No, no, that's all. Do okay. you want to keep going? Did I, did I not hear you? Just saying that's something that they can work on. Okay. Is there, all right, so the motion that I'm going to make, I'm looking for a second, that the hiring positions and decisions as recommended by the president that are of concern by the board chair may not be completed until concerns by the board chair are addressed, so sanctioned by the board. May I have a second? Uh, I, do, I do have one more thing, if I may, please. And I'll do this quick. One of the concerns I also have, and I'm just going to throw it out there now while we're in discussion, is that well, I would like the board to have some engagement with the 
and work with the president on the senior leadership because senior leadership, senior leadership as well as himself, re represents the college. And of course, as trustees, we have very much an interest in how the college is represented and, and who's representing it. And our senior leadership people are out in the community and engaging with the community from the dean level, vice president level, provost level up on a routine basis. So, so that is important. So I think we should have an engagement on that. The second concern I have, and I'm not quite sure how to deal with this within policy, so I'm just gonna say it here, is right now we can hire a temporary employee for up to three years. And I challenge most, I challenge everybody in this room to define temporary as up to three years. I, I, most of us don't think of temporary as three, up to three years. Temporary is like next week, just or a month or something. I fully agree with what you're saying, your sentiment, but say it in your subcommittee is what I suggest. Okay. Just expressing that is because we have people that are going to be working on some of these things. So, That's true. The other you I, subcommittee members do need to hear other board members input and this would be the time for that. So I'm sorry, Trustee Banducci, if I you need to. What I was doing is sharing with Trustee Zimmerman and, and Trustee Wagoner, a couple things. I just want to commend Trustee Wagoner and Trustee Zimmerman and thank you for stepping forward on that policy committee. It takes time to be on that and looking forward to your policies coming forward. So we can many policies that need to be improved. So and addressing Trustee Banducci's uh, concern on that too. So. I still haven't got a second, and I would really appreciate it if if people aren't even going to second this. I would like to go into executive session so we can talk about my legitimate concerns on this issue. Guys, this is important to me. I care about people. I think we can go through executive session. Well, I can. It's not on the agenda. This is this is this is a meeting, sir. So if the board wants to go into executive session, as I understand it, we can do that. I'd have to amend the agenda and declare an emergency. So I can tell you what. Where there's a will, there's a way. If there's no sentiment to go into executive session, there's a way we can figure it out. But I'm sensing that there's no sense to go into executive session and nobody cares about my concern. So in the interest of just saying this, people, there's Chairman, I care you. about whistleblower retaliation. It's not that we don't care about your concerns. I just think they need to be raised in the proper fashion. So put it on the agenda, bring something to support it, and let's let's discuss it. All right, well, I made the motion. If none of my trustees give me my second, then so be it. The motion that the hiring positions and decisions as recommended. A second for discussion. Mr. Chair. Trustee Wagoner, appreciate your second. For discussion, we've had discussion, sir. Okay, so then the motion before the board, I guess apparently you're coming for a vote. Motion that hiring positions and decisions as recommended by the president that are of concern by the board chair may not be completed until concerns by the board chair are addressed. So sanctioned by the board. I, I, I still have some things to say. Trustee Wagner, the floor is yours. Okay, so um, I understand your concerns. Um, I'm concerned about filling positions. Uh, so far, there's only two positions that I'm really thinking of. Right. Great. And, and we've authorized those positions? Uh, and actually, in a way, one of them is brand new and, and raises more anyway. And, uh, and no, I, I would say they, no. Um, I, I would disagree with that assertion. So, um, so we have not authorized the positions. Well, let's put it this way: we have authorized those assertions, and the president has full operational authority, and it is his decision to have those things. And if the board has uh, monitoring concerns, then it is within our ability to pass this motion. So, I'd like to hear from 
uh, Mr. McComber. This this is a so sanctioned by the board. This is the board telling the president. So are you implying that there's something I'm not doing properly? Or you got, can you just state that I'm I'm doing something wrong and and um, and address it that way? Um, because it's being around the bush is not is I'll not helpful. So if there's uh, actually you know, we, if you guys want to go into executive session and talk about uh, B, then I'll be happy to. But no, sir, I'm not going to provide a, a public evaluation of you in public. No, I, I appreciate you and I want to work positively with you. And I've had a private conversation with you before, sir. And I look forward to having more private conversations uh, with you to work in a collaborative fashion. So bringing your personnel item out in public like this, I've gone through McLennan, is not the best interest of you. It's not in the best interest of North Idaho College. Mr. Chair, if I could. This is discussion on a motion that Mr. Banducci first raised. He withdrew it. You made a second motion on the same subject. It was seconded for discussion. And there is, um, if, if discussion is over amongst the board, then there should be a vote. And then we should get to the last agenda item, which is on the remaining schedule, Mrs. Ms. Trustee Zimmerman's uh, initial uh, motion on there. And then uh, we should keep moving forward. All right, I'm gonna call for the vote. So, oh, I know I there's. I think we're done with discussion yet. We have to have four people agree to stop the discussion. Would you like to overrule the chair? Well, I don't think that's how. <laughs> Mr. Banducci, you want to say something? You might actually find an ally in Banducci in overruling the chair. But I'm going to call for the question unless I'm overruled. Remember, they're watching us. Mr. Chair, may I may I ask a question, please? Uh, I would rather you not. It's so disrespectful, Greg. As challenging Trustee as Trustee Zimmerman, may be, you're recognized. Go ahead. As challenging as this may be, sometimes the discord that goes on between some of the trustees, it feels like um you're excluding us and it's just it's it's not appropriate to talk to each other that way and i would appreciate it if you would just please just be more respectful I trustee corkle i would love to express all of my thoughts to you but the proper place to do that would be uh, is, is that zimmerman yeah so, look look just i'm just going to keep going and so, then, then i'll be done so first of all this discussion is not properly noticed Second of all, it's violating current policy. And if you move forward, it's going to really cause a loss of accreditation. I mean, call the ACT CT people. They'll tell you. Well, we're going to be talking to them tomorrow. Um, it, 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 would you like to hear my thoughts in executive session? There's a will, there's a way. Nope. Okay. Ms. Trustee Banducci. Ms. Mr. Chair. Um, It's been a lot of dialogue in between, but um, President Swain said a couple of things a, a bit ago, and uh, they kind of asked a question about what's, what's being questioned or challenged or, or that sort of thing. And I would like to express my concern, sir. Uh, so, you know, just you talk about beating around the, the bush and other things, and, and I don't know where everybody else is going, but. Todd, before you say that. Just realize that you are in public session. I, I realize that. Yeah. I, I, Floor is yours. Well, there's. <laughs> I am concerned about a temporary position that's being created, and I'll just leave it at that. And um, if there was a way to address that issue, I'd be open to that. That's beyond what, what I'm trying to do here with the motion. Yes. If you, sir, have a suggestion and or a compromise on that. Uh, I believe you, yes, sir, uh, President Swain, I'm, I am addressing you on this. I, I suspect you probably have an idea what position I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to talk with you about it. We can talk one-on-one. -on -one. That's fine. Absolutely. There's no need to change policy or, or 
or uh, make a, a major move like this, we can talk one on one. I can explain the situation from my perspective and happy to hear yours. And uh, well, I think I think we could do it after and we can do it separately. He and I can just have a conversation. Um, is, there a way, a is there a way to have done that in executive session? Oh, OK, may I ask another question, please? In order to have that discussion and for us to be able to to have a an honest dialogue on that is what is the timing for that position to be posted and filled Friday. and what's the kind of the timeline for that position? There, cur currently there's no app there are no there were no qualified applicants the last time I checked so it's not an issue. That's why I'm asking sir I, I don't know yeah. I don't know uh, just the the creation of the position had I had some concerns right so that's why I was just asking yeah. and I'm, I'm so, happy to address those it, it is not in retaliation for anything and no I'm not um, going there I'm not going there that wasn't my question again the, okay. Let's not go any further than just what I'm asking. Okay, that's what I was kind of saying earlier too. Same thing. Yeah. Um, just keep it between what you and I are talking about right at this moment. So right now uh, it's open ended, so we would have some time to, to yeah. be able to chat about this. And there's no imminent timeline. That, right. Okay, that's what I wanted yeah. to know. I, I didn't know what the timeline was and how that was progressing. It'll it'll be at, at best fastest we could we could make any decision on that would be I'd say three to four weeks so at, okay. at the current rate things. Are Okay, that, that, thank you. That's what I was wanting to know. Just, just an idea. If this is constructive, Dr. Swain, we're having another meeting on Wednesday. We're concerned about one position. Yep. Could you, the two of you have a conversation sure. before that time? And, and then if we need to add something to Absolutely. the agenda, if we can come uh, have a discussion outside and come to some That's compromise. Yep. It, I don't know if the timeline will allow it, but we can certainly talk. We can talk. We can talk. It's no problem. Okay. All right. We'll, 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 okay, we got There's still a second. I'm we not, need I'm not going to withdraw second. mine, but I think Mr. Wagoner is going to withdraw his. Yeah, I, I'd like to withdraw mine just so that Dr. Swain and other folks have a chance to talk offline in an appropriate manner. Nick, did, did you say something to me? I couldn't. No, no, I, I just said I, I think if, if we can talk, then there's no reason to move forward with the motion. That was all. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think we're under our last agenda topic, which was uh, put on by Trustee Mr. Zimmerman. Was the second and the motion both withdrawn? Uh, my motion never got a second. Yeah, 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 yes, sir, it did for discussion purposes. Oh. So I believe Mr. Wagner withdrew his second. So I, if you would withdraw your motion, sir, we're going to move on. Yeah, to follow the. I actually didn't want to withdraw my motion. I understand. Not I'm not required to. Required to. And may the minutes second, right? may the minutes stand that I did not withdraw my motion and that it did not get to a second. That's why I was just asking. Okay. And as my fellow trustees, I just ask for your respect that as a trustee, I'm doing everything I can to what I think would be the interests of NIC employees. And you're welcome to disagree with me. And I respect your board decision. Moving forward, Trustee Banducci. Mr. Chair. Um, Trustee Zimmerman, I believe the last item had yeah. your name on it. Would you be willing to pass on that tonight? And... Yes, I'd like to decline on that and not discuss it at Thank all. You. And I would just love to adjourn this meeting. For the good of the order, this meeting is adjourned at 825. Have a good night. Thanks for showing up, everyone.